Hi, this is Quad, and in this video, I want to tell you about the early and the delayed after depolarizations. So the early one, the EAD, and the later one, the DAD. Now, the typical ventricular action potential looks something like that. It has a few phases, the resting phase, phase four, rising phase, phase zero, phase one to drop, phase two to sustain action potential, and phase three to bring the potential down. Now, it's not a problem if the next one starts around here. It's also not a problem if the next one starts a little bit early as long as there's recovery later down the line. But it's a problem if the next action potential starts somewhere around here or here continuously. Then the next action potential that starts early doesn't have enough resources to be a healthy one. This is where the action potential starts and this is where it ends and it fully recovers. So a lot of things will be used in the early phase and be deactivated down the line. For example, the voltage gated NA channel is on all of these times, but it gets deactivated around here. This is what gives you the effective refractory period or absolute refractory period where the next action potential is going to be very difficult to start. Also the voltage gated calcium channels, they are difficult to turn off. So they give you this long um, phase two. Again, they need to be fully recovered before the next action potential can start. And if you start the next one too early without having the VCAC recovered, then the next action potential will have shorter elbow. For example, here it's shorter. And if you start the next one around the same time where it's able to start action potential, but not enough VCAC is available, the next one is going to be shorter and shorter and shorter. And by the way, this um, what I just drew, starting of the next action potential, where it's able to start, that means the VNACs are available for you to start the next one, but not enough VCAC available. This is the delayed after depolarization. And delayed after depolarization happens when the action potential starts somewhere around here. Again, start, end. You have to wait to have the next action potential to be exact the same. But if you don't wait and start around here, the NA gates are back. They're ready for you to shoot, but the calcium gates are not there. So the shoulder here is going to be shorter than the previous one. And if you keep doing this, then the shoulder gets shorter and shorter, eventually a bunch of lines. And this is the delayed after the depolarization. Now let's talk about some of the hallmarks of DAD. First, obviously high heart rate, because look, the frequency is higher every action potential is narrower because you can't sustain the phase two. So you end up with high heart rate. Second, when this is happening, you don't give enough time for the voltage calcium channel to recover. What does recover mean? Well, recover means that keep the intracellular calcium concentration to be super low and outside to be super high, the ratio of 10,000 outside to one inside. If you don't give it enough time, then your intracellular calcium level is going to be higher than usual. This is hallmark of not having, again, VCAC fully recovered, and this will decrease your elbow size. Now let's talk about the EAD. EAD happens when the next action potential tries to start around two here-ish and three here-ish. This is a problem, not because you don't have enough CAC, of course you don't. But the real problem here, or the more urgent one, is that you don't have enough NA channels ready for you to shoot the next one. As a result, you'll end up not being able to create the next action potential properly and this heart can get to arrhythmia. So is DAD. Why is it that the action potential is trying to start too early? Well, it's because look at the uh, voltage gated NA channel. It has the M gate and then the H gate. If we graph the voltage versus openness, the M is closed when the voltage is low, but as you increase it, here's a negative 60 millivolt-ish. This is going to open for you. And the H is opposite, open, but closes. M is faster to go up and down, open, close, and H is slow. Now, if you are easy to start the next action potential, then you have more of this than this. Why is that? They're both stopping NA from going through, but here it's the M, doing the block, here's the H. M is faster 
and M gets out of your way faster. You give it a signal, M will disappear and NA can go, but H is slow, so this is better at starting the next action potential. And for people with EAD or also some form of LQT, what's happening is that the next action potential starts too early, either because you're not falling fast enough and many of the NA channels are getting to this state, or you have a problem in your resting potential. In fact, people with EAD usually have hypokalemia, so outside concentration of K is lower than usual. And why is this bad? It's because if you want to compute the cell's action potential, which is sum of all permeability of ion multiplied by the ion's um, action potential, pure one, and that for the K is going to be negative 61.5 millivolt and log base 10 ratio of K inside over K outside. Now, this is usually about 10. There's more inside than outside. With hypokalemia, the bottom is going to get smaller. This factor is going to get bigger and overall you have a more negative value. More negative value means you're shifting towards left. Shifting towards left means more H is open and more M is closed. This state, see? The hypokalemia led to easier setup to start the next action potential. But anyways, so if you have this problem, what happens is that eventually the elbow gets kind of long, right? You see the next one doesn't start too early, too fast. So you have the opposite effect of this. This gave you the high heart rate and this one will give you the low heart rate. But both of these are not sustainable. They're both going to fail. They're both going to get arrhythmia and you're going to have a problem. But they have difference in how they get there. One goes low heart rate and boom out. The other one goes to high heart rate and boom, you're out.